So having previously had a look at the entire electromagnetic spectrum, here we're going to take a closer look at a particular portion of it. So this is the UV spectrum. And uh, among other portions, there's UVA, UVB and UVC within that. And these turn out to be quite important because we get quite a lot of these uh, portions within the UV spectrum instant upon Earth from the Sun, um, but also from a lot of artificial sources as well. And uh, their effects can be quite detrimental. Uh, so let's just set the scene first and start by establishing uh, what each of these regions are. So I'll just sketch out a simple table that will allow us to summarize some of the key characteristics and the differences between these. So over here we can have the UVA, UVB, and surprise, surprise, let's do UVC in the last one. So we'll start by having a look at the wavelengths. Uh, so in nanometers, UVA tends to go from, uh, is taken to be from 400 to 315 nanometers. Uh, UVB goes from 280 to uh, 315, so from this 315 on to the 280, and here we go um, from 100 nanometers up to the 280 that UVB left off. At. So this is all within the UV spectrum, within the UV portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. We've just divided it up into these different regions because it turns out they've got slightly different properties. Uh, so all of these types have got enough energy uh, to do us some damage. Uh, so here's an example of the damage that it can do. Um, all three of these types will have, uh, are capable of doing this. So what we've got here is um, there's a study from the New England Journal of Medicine, I believe. And this here is a 69-year-old American trucker. And you can see for having spent his entire life uh, with... Uh, one arm out the window, the window open, the sun shining through the window on his face. Um, one side of his face has become massively more aged compared to the other side of his face. So this is the effect of a lifetime of exposure to UV radiation, um, in addition to uh, cancers and things like that that we'll cover in a moment. So all of these are capable of damaging the skin. Um, so, uh, but UVA won't actually damage DNA. So UVA will damage the skin. It damages the collagen in the skin and gives that uh, horrible sort of scaly appearance and the premature aging, the acceleration of the aging. Uh, UVB and C are both capable of damaging not only the skin, but also the DNA within our cells. And that, of course, has more serious repercussions. It can result in uh, mutagenesis, uh, mutations in uh, cells, which can lead to cancer. The big C. Um, but UVC, fortunately, we don't actually have to worry about too much. UVC is almost entirely blocked by the atmosphere. So up in uh, the higher regions of the atmosphere, uh, UVC is absorbed um, when it's instant upon oxygen in the atmosphere and it creates ozone by doing so. So it creates the ozone in our atmosphere um, when it's absorbed. UVA and UVB both get through. There's some U absorption of UVB and so the majority of what gets down to uh, sea level down to earth, down to us, is UVA, but there's still a decent amount of UVB that gets through. UVA, on uh, hitting the skin, uh, will cause an amount of tanning, so the melanin that's inside our skin um, that causes uh, the often considered aesthetic uh, tanning appearance, the darkening of skin, uh, it darkens that. So the melanin inside our skin, it gets darker when the UVA is instant on it. Uh, but that's a, a short-term tanning, so it'll, it'll tan you quite quickly, but it won't last very long, because what UVB does 
is in response to this DNA damage, it rather than just darkening uh, the melanin, it actually makes more of it. So this takes a little bit longer to come into effect. This takes about two days before the skin will start to darken in response to UVB exposure. But then once it's darkened, once the increase in melanin is there, that lasts a lot longer than this UVA tanning does. Um, UVC can also cause this, but as I said, it's mostly absorbed and it's quite nasty, so we tend to avoid it if we can. UVA is generally considered less harmful because it only damages the skin and not the DNA as well. And so um, in the early days of uh, suntan lotion or sun lotion, UVA generally wasn't blocked against. Uh, nowadays most sun lotion will block against both UVA and UVB because the A, um, the A region is now considered harmful. Um, but because it is considered less harmful, UVA also gets used in things like uh, when we want to illuminate fluorescent materials to make them glow in the dark or um, so in clubs for example if you go in they might have UV lamps and those will be producing UVA radiation rather than UVB or UVC. Uh, UVB is actually also what's responsible for producing vitamin D. So that of course we know is that humans are able to produce vitamin D when light is instant upon us and it is this UVB region um, that results in that. So if we are not exposed to UVB then we can become deficient in vitamin D if we don't get sufficient supplements from our diet, uh, be them through dietary supplements or just the nature of our diet. On the other hand if we have too much UVB then of course we face the dangers of skin and DNA damage and the uh, sunburn that comes from that. Uh, so th this UVB, this skin damage, um, because it's a bit more serious than the UVA, this skin damage leads to sunburn. Whereas the skin damage that UVA does just leads to premature aging. We don't see any reddening of the skin, any sunburn from the UVA. So having briefly mentioned the uh, suntan lotion, we can have a closer look at the effect of it. So here we've got an image which somebody has created. We've got two pictures. One is taken with visible light using a regular camera. Uh, that's the left hand side. And on the other side, we've got a second image on the right hand side with the same person, but rather than being captured in the visible spectrum, this is a photo taken with a UV camera. So what we're seeing is UV light rather than the range of visible light. So on the left hand side we can't see anything special about this person's face. But on the right hand side we see a massive darkening uh, of the skin on the left hand side whereas the right hand side is quite light. And what's going on here is on the left hand side this person has placed some sun cream on. Uh, and that is absorbing the UV light as it is designed to do. It absorbs it to protect our skin. It gets absorbed by the lotion so our skin doesn't absorb it. So that is really dark because it's not reflecting the UV light. On the right hand side we're left exposed and so um, that's not being absorbed and it appears a bit brighter. Notice also we can see a lot more, uh, we can see bits of the skin uh, that we couldn't see here. So we can see uh, little bits of scars, little uh, pigmentations uh, in the skin that, and these can reveal damage so if you take somebody uh, who's been uh, under a tanning booth a lot and take this sort of image then their face will look extremely mottled and unpleasant whereas somebody who's got lovely healthy skin will look fine. So uh, this is UV A through C radiation we've got the wavelengths that they cover they all damage the skin, um, but UVA will just cause aging. UVB also causes sunburn, but UVB and C can also damage the DNA. UVC, fortunately, is mostly uh, not a concern because it's absorbed in the atmosphere to create ozone. UVB, by damaging the DNA, uh, causes an increase in the production of melanin, which results in a long-term tan. 
uh, and it's also used by the body to create vitamin D. UVA is used um, for being considered slightly more harmless, uh, is used in uh, for recreational purposes, for UV lighting, for uh, black lights, um, and it also causes a short-term tanning just by making the existing melanin uh, a bit darker rather than actually producing more of it.